The Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi comes with a built-in 12x8 LED matrix that can be programmed in a few different ways, each suited to specific applications. In today's lesson, you'll learn the different techniques for controlling it, like displaying text, graphics, animations, or even playing games. You'll understand how to work with pixels using two-dimensional arrays. You'll learn how binary and hexadecimal numbers are stored in variables to render graphics for efficient memory management. And finally, you'll learn how to use the online LED matrix editor to start creating your own graphics and animations easily. Hey everyone, it's me, Joe Edgo, and welcome back to Education is Life. Today, we're on lesson 3 of the series, Level Up with Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi IoT Development Crash Course. Throughout this series, we will be working alongside this 52 pi cloud-ready starter kit. If you're interested, you can check it out on their website at 52 pi.com or at Amazon. Links are provided below. Again, Thank you so much, 52 Pi, for sponsoring the series. To start, let's talk about how to control this built-in 12x8 LED matrix using an array. Now, first things first, make sure that you have installed the latest version of the Uno R4 board package because alongside this Renesas Uno R4 core package is the Arduino LED matrix library that we need to reference in our sketch. So, first, let's include this library at the top of our sketch like this. Then, we need to create an Arduino LED matrix object we call matrix. And then lastly, we start the LED matrix object with a begin method. Now, in order to control the built-in 12x8 LED matrix on your Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, we need to create a space in memory that holds bits of 1s and zeros to form a 12x8 two-dimensional image. The LED matrix library provides two ways to do this. The first is simply to make a two-dimensional array like this. A two-dimensional array or 2D array is the simplest form of the multi-dimensional array. You can think of it as an array of one-dimensional arrays arranged one over another forming a table with rows and columns. The basic form of declaring a 2D array with x number of rows and y number of columns look like this. The type of data to be stored in each element in this case, we use byte to store either 1 or 0, followed by the array name, the number of rows, and the number of columns. Here, we have created a two-dimensional array with 8 rows and 12 columns each. Now, this approach is simple to understand because you can see the image in the pattern of the array. This arrangement of logic ones forms a heart as you see on the screen. Here is the equivalent to the array illustrated in Excel for you to better visualize it. The ones are the on pixels and the zeros are the off pixels. So, to render it on your LED matrix, simply call the render bitmap method and provide three arguments. The array name, the number of rows, and the number of columns. And that's it. We can upload this code now. And here, we can already see the heart shape pattern similar to the ones shown in this 2D array. Now, with this approach, we can easily see each pixel's value which makes it easy to edit at runtime. For example, if we want to change the value of this last pixel at the bottom right corner of the matrix, we can access the array cell at row 7, column 11, and set its new value to 1. Recall that arrays in Arduino are zero-based indexing, so here we have index 0 up to index 7 for the rows, and index 0 up to index 11 for the columns. This is how we access a specific array location in code at runtime. Now, for us to see this change, we need to call the render bitmap method again to render this new image. I'll include a short delay here so that we can see the original image first before rendering this new one. And then, let's change it back to 0 and have another delay before looping back to render the image again. Let's upload this code and see how it looks. And as you can see, there is a blinking pixel at the bottom right corner of the matrix. Now, although this method is easy to use and easy to understand, it takes more memory than is needed. How is that so? Well, even though each LED needs only a single bit to store its state of either 1 or 0, we're still using a byte to store just a single bit in each cell. Generally, the smallest addressable chunk of data in Arduino is a byte. So declaring a byte array creates an array where each element uses 8 bits or 1 byte of memory. Now, since we have 96 elements in this matrix, that's 8 times 12, 
we allocate 96 bytes of memory space per image. This is not memory efficient if we only need 96 bits of memory space. Now, a more memory efficient method to store an image is to use a single dimensional array of 32-bit integers. So, we only need three 32 bits to hold 96 bits of data. But how do we do that? First, we need to convert these binary numbers into hexadecimal numbers. Hexadecimal is like shorthand for binary, using digits 0 to 9 and letters A to F. To do that, we take these binary numbers and split them into groups of 4 bits, starting from the rightmost bit. Then, each group of 4 bits, we assign a single hex value. The sequence 8421 helps us group binary digits for conversion. Here's how it works. Each bit within the group contributes a value based on its position. The rightmost bit is 1 and the leftmost bit is 8. Now, we simply add the values of the on bits, those with value of 1, in the group to get a decimal equivalent. For example, here we only have one bit that is on, so this is equivalent to 8. In this group, this is 1. And in this group, the hex value is 3, that's 2 plus 1. Now, for this group, 8 plus 4 is 12. And for decimal values ranging from 10 to 15, we use letters A to F instead. So A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, and so on. Now this group has a total of 11, so that's B. And finally, this group is equal to 7. Let's convert the rest of these into hexadecimal numbers. Now, we need to create a single dimension array of unsigned 32-bit integers that holds three elements. So, the first 32 bits or 4 bytes of data include these values, 318, 7BC, 7F. Here, we put 0x to denote that this number is in hexadecimal notation. The next 4 bytes include these values, C3F8, 1F00. And finally, the third element is E0040000. To render this image on the LED matrix, we use the load frame method instead and pass this array as an argument. In the Arduino LED matrix library, this single image that we render at any given moment is what we call a frame. So, let's comment out these codes for now and hit upload. And we see a similar heart image rendered on the matrix. However, this method is more memory efficient. Now, same as before, if we want to access a specific element in our array, like in this case, the last bit, we access the element at index 2 and replace the last hex value from 0 to 1. Please note that we are now using a one-dimensional array instead of a two-dimensional array. That's why we only access either index 0, 1, or 2. And each hex value stored in these locations consists of 4 bits. Again, we call the load frame method and reset the last bit back to 0. So let's test it again. And it shows a similar heart image with a blinking pixel at the bottom right corner of the matrix. The concept of animation works on the principle of having multiple frames displayed in sequence one after the other. For example, I'll create another frame. This is a slightly different version of the previous heart image. And then let's comment out these codes and load the second frame after half a second. Have another delay and loop back. So let's upload this code and see how it looks. And we have a nice heart animation. It is also worth knowing that there are predefined frames that we can readily use instead of creating one from scratch. Here are the available frames listed in this documentation. For example, let's use this lead matrix like. So I'll duplicate this code and simply replace this parameter. And let's try another one. So let's upload the code and see how it looks. Well, it looks great. You can have as many frames as you want if you desire a more complex animation, 
so long as you have enough memory space to store your frames. However, plotting ones and zeros on a 2D array to form an image you desire and then converting them into hexadecimal values to create a custom frame is time-consuming. The good thing is that Arduino offers an online LED matrix editor to make this task easy. All we have to do is to draw on this 12 by 8 frame editor like this. Now, if we want another frame similar to this one, we can simply duplicate this frame by clicking this button. So now we can make some changes to the second frame. I'll duplicate this again and add another bar of battery charge. I'll duplicate this again and add another bar. And again, one last time. Now, we can click this play button to preview our animation. By the way, the number at the bottom of each frame is the time delay in milliseconds before moving to the next frame. We can change this to a bigger value like 500 to make the animation a bit slower. Now, to get the equivalent Arduino code of these frames, simply click this code button. Give it a file name. Let's call it charging. And this is automatically downloaded as a C header source file or that H file. We can view it on a notepad. And as you can see, this is just an array of frames. So basically, it is a two-dimensional array with five rows and four columns each. Now, to use this, we can move this header file to the directory of our current sketch and reference it in our code, or we can create our own header file by simply clicking on this three ellipses button and choosing new tab. We give our new header file a name. Let's call it animation.h and click OK. Now let's copy and paste this code here. And that's it. Let me rearrange this frame so it is easier to visualize a two-dimensional array of five rows with four columns each. Now, this is frame one, the zero bar battery image. This is frame two, the one bar image. This is frame three, the two bars. This is three bars, and this is the full bar image. Now, in our main sketch, we need to include this animation that H. And then we can access each frame from this array of frames and load them one by one. While this approach is going to work, the Arduino LED matrix object has provided us with a simple method to load this sequence of frames, the load sequence method. And then simply pass in this array of frames as an argument. This loads the animation sequence into the buffer but does not display it. To start playing the loaded sequence, we must call the play method. By default, it will play a single sequence, but if we put through as an argument, the animation sequence will loop. Let's comment out the rest of the code so we can focus on this animation. Let's upload it. And we have a nice battery charging animation. Similar to the predefined frames, the LED matrix library also offers a bunch of predefined animations that we can readily use. Let's try this animation audio waveform. First, let's put a 3 second delay here so we can see the battery charging animation once before showing the audio waveform animation. So, let's upload it and see how it looks. And it looks great. Let's try another one of these. The animation start up. And let's upload the code. And we have a nice Arduino logo and scrolling text. Although we can create frames to display text and animate them, there is another library that we can use to simplify this task. First, we need to install the Arduino graphics library and then include it in our sketch. Now, we can call the begin draw method. Set the text scroll speed in terms of milliseconds. Then we set the text font. Here, we have two font size options, either 4x6 or 5x7. And then we call the begin text method to specify the location of our text. That's column zero and say row one. And the third argument is the color. 
Please note that this library supports a variety of RGB LED matrices. However, this built-in LED matrix only support one color. And with that, we'll simply set this to 24 bits of 1. And now, to render a text, we call the print line method and provide the text we want to display. And then, we call the end text method. Here, we can provide any of the five enum constants such as no scroll, scroll left, scroll right, scroll up, and scroll down. Let's try scroll left for now. And finally, we call the end draw method to end the drawing operation. Now, one more thing, let's change this startup animation to play only once and have a five second delay for us to see this animation first before showing the scrolling text. So, let's upload the code and see how it looks. Arduino provides good documentation with functioning examples, a gallery of frames, and tools that can help you get started with the LED matrix in different ways. I encourage you to practice writing more advanced sketches on your own by exploring the full API of the library shown here. Again, thank you so much for joining me in this third lesson of the series, Level Up with Arduino Uno R4 Wi-Fi, IoT Development Crash Course. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Arduino lessons, please hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you never miss a new upload. You can also share this video with your friends who might be interested in learning more about Arduino. The more viewers we have, the more in-depth content we can create for you in the future. So keep learning, keep experimenting, and always remember, education is life. See you in our next lesson. Happy coding!